Dr. Carson, are you in the limelight here? Are you okay? Can you, I'm good. It's not bothering you too bad. <laughs> just stop that when you're good. I can raise another couple inches. <laughs> That'd be good. <laughs> it's just have everybody have to look at it. We'll just hunker down, down below. I'll just get really close over there. That's right. better? All right. Yeah. That's great. All right. Thank you, folks. Let's, are we ready to start? We're ready. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll call this meeting to order. This is the Cherokee Nation Environmental Protection Commission. Um, Tuesday, November 10th, nine, it's 9.07 a.m. We have a full slate of commissioners on deck. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the record of public notice um, and meeting attendance. Let's go around the room and introduce ourselves and then we'll go to the rest of the agenda. Tom Elkins, Jersey Nation Environmental Program. Joe Washington, Cherokee Nation Services. Robinson, Cherokee Nation Waste Management. Stephanie Rainwater, Cherokee Nation Environmental Consultants. Jackie Woodward, Cherokee Nation Environmental Program. Pat Gwynn, Cherokee Nation Administration Support. Sean West, Environmental Program. Roger Graham, Cherokee Phoenix. Ed Fight. Marty Matlock. Lena Carson. Jack Spears. Blake Fletcher. Laura Adair, Environmental Programs. So thank you all for being here today. Uh, we, we have the minutes from the, the previous meeting uh, been circulated, uh, the October 13th meeting. I was not in attendance, so I will abstain from, from voting, but I will accept, entertain a motion to approve or amend the minutes. I'd like to make a motion to amend. Make motion to amend? Yes, uh, in regard to public comments, uh, <clears throat> it states that the Cherokee and Adair counties are through the Wagner office, and the person assigned to the counties is Jonathan Robinson. Um, the that I, I guess at one time is where it used to be, and I'm not sure if Cherokee County is still uh, that way. Adair County is uh, listed through the Salisaw DEQ office. Okay, and, and uh, the appropriate number for reaching them is 918-790-2498. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway. That's, that's a good. correction of public record. That's good. I, uh, Laura, do you need any more information for that? No, I, I actually can't go back in and change that month minutes, but I can put the correction in this month minutes referring back to that matter. And that's perfectly appropriate. Yes, it yes. would just correct the public record. So it's not that the minutes were incorrect, it's just the, the information was incorrect. All right. And with that amendment, I would like to uh, make a motion that we accept the minutes. So we're accepting the minutes as written uh, with, the notice, with, the, uh, with the notice of correction of public record in this, in this meeting's amendments. Correct. Okay. Specifically, Adair County is accessed through Salisaw office and Cherokee County is access to the Wagner office. Yes, that's the specific um, correction. Good. Any other questions or discussion? Do I have a, a motion? Do we have a second? Second. Motion second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, uh, please solicit the vote. Commissioner Fye. Aye. Commissioner Matlock. Abstain. Commissioner Carson. Aye. Commissioner Fletcher. Aye. Commissioner Spears. Aye. All right, thank you very much. I have a question. Just appropriate time, public comments, yes. Blake, what is the name of that gentleman? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Corey Bates, B-E-I-G-H-T-S. One more time. B-E-I-G-H-T-S, Bates. Corey. <coughs> It's a French spelling, if I ever heard one. Raise. We. We. Raise. I am informed by the person who really runs the show here that we actually have uh, September minutes to approve as well because they weren't ready yet for the last minutes of meeting, so uh, or one circulated. So uh, September meeting again. I was not in attendance at the September meeting. I was in Hawaii with my family. Sorry. Uh, not, yes. Yes. Sir. 
as it pains me to do this, then I will move, move approval. Uh, okay, motion made to approve the September minutes. Any second? Second. Seconded. Any discussion for the September minutes? Hearing none, uh, we'll entertain a vote. Commissioner Fight. Aye. Commissioner Matlock. Abstain. Commissioner Carson. Aye. Commissioner Spears. Aye. Commissioner Fletcher. Aye. Fantastic. All right, so now we're moving into the public comment section, often the more entertaining element of this of our meetings. Anyone have anything to say? You got five minutes. I'd just like to report since uh, Commissioner Fike did not know Roger Van passed away. Oh. And he was reporting to you as a commissioner. Yeah. Uh, yes. For uh, what is it, natural resources. I'm so sorry. What happened? Pat? Heart attack. He got a heart attack uh, uh, while he was deer hunting in the woods. You got to go. The way to do it. He was here at our last meeting. Yeah, I know. Uh, what I, I wasn't at that meeting, but I, I, I met the gentleman. So. What's scary if he's my age? Well, a little younger than Ed. I'm 53. We're. we're uh, we could, we could easily slip into a moment of, uh, we certainly could entertain a moment of silence and respect. That's appropriate. It's always a shock to lose a colleague uh, especially mid-stride, um, but that's something to remember. Uh, we all walk that path. So uh, thank you for reminding us. All right, uh, any other public comments? We have Wayne Isaacs is coming in. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, Wayne? Just fine, sir. You're in the public comments section of the agenda. Nothing to add? We'll move on to reports then. Mr. Elkins? Yes, sir. Uh, you have our report, and so I won't uh, discuss that unless you have any questions to, uh, uh, to ask. But I do have a couple of additions that are uh, fairly recent. Since that time, uh, week before last, uh, me, Pat Gwynn, and a member from our uh, climate change group, which is our water planning group, uh, attended a vulnerability assessment training in uh, which is part of our climate change uh, thing that go in uh, Santa Fe, which was really good. I wasn't uh, really looking forward to it, but uh, you know, you talk to professionals like that, you can find common ground on some things. Mm -hmm. and so uh, they were mainly biologists, but I did find a geologist to talk to. So. That's good. You found someone you can yes. <laughs> find common ground. With. That's right. No, That's I'm. Uh, it's not that I don't. I'm just. Biologist, uh, I just don't understand them a lot. So. Uh, but it was a good training. It was a very good training. And one thing that I did uh, uh, that I believe is going to help us quite a bit, you all understand that we're uh, in the process with the state of Arkansas and Oklahoma uh, of looking at a total maximum daily load uh, uh, criteria for the Illinois River. and. One of the things that they looked at, which I didn't even know this could be a part of, but I'm really glad it is, is uh, there's two things on this TMDL thing that I'm looking at now. One is uh, a vulnerability or a climate change aspect to this, and we're not even looking at that. And well, what does that mean? What are, what are the elements that are vulnerable to our, well, to our systems? If we're, if we're really looking at climate change, what we've always thought is that means water. And uh, so maybe lack of. So if we have less water going into the Illinois River, what is that going to mean? Well, one thing that can mean, or that we might answer the questions of, uh, because I went to that training, you know, we wear several hats here. I missed a, uh, a modeling training for uh, the, the Illinois River, and there's two separate ones. Uh, the Lake Tinkiller is somewhat of a riverine lake, because it's man-made, it just filled up that river. Yeah, all lakes are just slow rivers. Well, not all. All reservoirs, reservoirs. Uh, but either way, um, there are two separate models for that. 
a TMDL process, and I missed that training, that modeling training. Well, I went back and forth with EPA several times, and uh, since we are one of the principals in that decision making, or supposed to be, I just hammered them until they set up another training for it. So Congratulations. I'm going to do that, but I'm also going to... Uh, when is that? Well, it's probably going to be the week of November 30th, okay. unless the sky falls. That's the first week of December as well. Okay. Yes, it is. Uh, and it'll be at Region 6, and I'd like a person or two to go with me on that. Um, but what I'd like to do is to ask them to run some scenarios of climate change and just see how that might impact that. And uh, uh, I didn't know this, but there had been a, a court case uh, in the East where they were doing a TMDL and they didn't put climate change data in that. And EPA lost on that and they had to go back and redo it. And so I'd rather have it done now than have to figure it out later. So I think it's wise. That's what uh, I'm going to be pushing for in the next few weeks. And our research indicates for our region, climate change is not going to be a trend, wetter or drier. If there is a trend, it may be wetter. Mm -hmm. But certainly what it is is more extreme, more frequent extreme events. Exactly. Uh, and that's that means more flooding. Right. Also means longer droughts, longer hots, long, colder colds. Those sorts Which of means a lot more planning for us. Yeah, it means that the whole system is going to be more stressed. Mm. And uh, when we get to Mr. Gwynn's uh, presentation, he'll have a he has a comment about that. I think with I'm sure with <laughs> native tobacco, is that right, Pat? Yes. Yes. And that, that's what I have. And if you have any questions, you have to answer those. Yes. I'd like to know or have Tom report on what actions if there were any from the meeting he had in Tulsa in September I think with other tribes about self-governance well that's a good question I was curious about that too how did okay. it go I, I discussed it a little bit at our one of those meetings uh, the last one or yeah. two um, we had I say several tribes 12 to 15 something to that effect uh, that's just off the top of my head um, this isn't the first time that self-governance at EPA has been discussed. Uh, years ago, they called it 638 modeling. Right. Uh, public law uh, 93638 93, <laughs> was the uh, law that set self-governance up. Um, so that's what tribes have been discussing for years. <clears throat> the, there was also a training in, uh, I believe it was Montana or Wisconsin, that came about the same time as that one we had that had a whole uh, breakout session on self-governance at EPA and what that could mean, what it doesn't mean. And you know, EPA has, the EPA's opinion, I, I've gotten it from the director of uh, uh, American Indian Environmental Office, is that their Indian policy right now, they believe means self-governance for India. Well, it, it's not at all. We don't believe it has anything like that. But what, what has happened, you all know, and I apologize that our Secretary of Natural Resources couldn't be here. She had a meeting that had been planned for several weeks for today, and she just couldn't make it. Um, we talked to her about there's a tribal leaders meeting last week in D.C. at EPA. Yeah. And she went and uh, uh, she got to speak with several people up there and uh, got to put out several of the points that we were discussing and one of those being self-governance at EPA so one thing we are really really pushing that again I've asked all our folks if they talk to EPA that's got to be mentioned every time that we talk to them I want to keep it in their face region six's opinion in my assessment is in my personal opinion is that self-governance means you can administer the grants they give you yes that's pretty much it and that is not governance not that's it that's program administration it is uh, governance means we are sovereign and we, and we control our destiny. But I'll tell you this whole, our Secretary of Natural Resources, a person at that level with the expertise that Sarah brings to that, that is going to help the Cherokee Nation in environmental areas. I did my own little private dance of celebration when that announcement came out. Oh man, and she is the person for it. She's doing really good. Oh, I, yeah, we, uh, she has our wholehearted oh, support and so we, again, We've taken a big step into uh, into managing our own natural resources as a sovereign nation with this appointment. That's big right. Step. That's so right. I know you guys have already celebrated that in our previous meetings, but uh, it can't go 
it can't be said often enough how important this is for us. That's true. But that whole meeting in Tulsa was just that, discussing how uh, tribes can push that, where we should go with it, and that's just our first few steps into that. Sure. Uh, the chief has written a letter to uh, the administrator of EPA. We've had several discussions about it. We've had uh, a resolution coming from the Intertribal Council of the five tribes supporting that. We want to run that through NCAI at some point and get something like that. As you know, that's the largest uh, Native American group that, uh, in the country, and they carry a lot of weight as far as things of that nature. And so um, that'll probably be our next push. So I noticed on your report that, to change subjects, but thank you for that, on the, I know we'll come to the landfill specifically in a moment, but on the uh, Leachate Pond Free Board, that the last report we have on their, your table is the 13th. I assume that you've got subsequent visits. Oh, very much so. And Jackie can answer that, but they are in compliance with that. All right, so it's, I noticed it's going the right direction from the 17th to the 20th, or 17th to the 13th. So yes, now. they were at 26 inches of Free Board yesterday. We get visits pretty much every day. That's, that's, that's all good, and it's all good that you're in the right direction, and it's more than that it's past the threshold. So right, we'll take good news and we can get it. Anything else, any other questions for Director? Mr. Oh. Chairman, I'd like to ask Tom concerning the uh, Clean Water Program. It states that staff sample Lake Tenkiller for herbicides and pesticides where was this done, Tom, do you know? I, I don't know the exact place. I could get Ryan to give a report about that next month, if you like. Um, they sample the lake periodic, quarterly at least, and then uh, several lakes, I mean rivers and creeks. Well, my, my concern with this is being a member of the Tahlequah Public Works Authority, uh, we pull water out of Lake Tendigar, mm -hmm. and uh, consequently, if you're drinking water here, you're drinking it now. So it'd be, to me, it would be very important to know where they're pulling that out, whether it's near the nursery, which I would have a question about, because obviously uh, our plant is located very close to the nursery. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, this is water that, that is uh, used by <coughs> the nation and by Tahlequah. Certainly, certainly. So I think it's very important. I know it said the sample show levels below the detection limit, but I, uh, I wonder where it was taken. You know, if it was taken on the far end, why it probably wouldn't have any effect. But right, right. If it was taken close to the nurseries, it could have an effect. I can certainly find out for you and have it ready for. You. I probably I can send it to you before the next meeting. Appreciate it, sir. Thank certainly. you. Certainly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure. In, excuse me. Sir. Sure. In in regard to that issue, uh, Tom, is it uh, permissible to? change sites if uh, that collection site was deemed uh, out of bounds or not <coughs> pertaining to uh, water uptake for the city of Southall? The easiest answer is it depends. If it's something that we've locked into for a certain area and we need to find out the trends and we're putting that into a federal database, which it probably is, it probably wouldn't be very easy to change right now. I mean, it can be changed, but uh, we would have to have reason for that. There was, I haven't talked to Ryan directly about where this point is, or points, but um, certainly they pick it for a reason. It is, they don't just go out there and pick the easiest point there is. Um, but if there's a point that they're taking regularly, quarterly, they're going to see if there's trends in that sample. So, if they're taking it, and it, I don't know the exact history of that one, but if it's, uh, you see what I'm saying? I do, yes. So, I can find out on that and let you know, certainly. But, but it, it, even to entertain uh, a situation where we might even could add one That's that right. would uh, influence uh, the understanding and questions and that are <coughs> being uh, raised by the uh, city of Tahlequah Certainly. and also uh, the influence it has over the Cherokee Nation. Well, uh, and we'll find out where that is, but 
I've talked to Ryan about upping some of our sampling along some of these creeks and maybe some of the mercury issues that we're looking at. So if it's not where we want it, we could probably add one or two. Yeah. Where I, know, we would. I know where you're, you're saying if you got a history of, of sampling in a certain area, you want to know if there's peaks and valleys in that. Very much so. But, uh, I don't know of any that would uh, influence what's going on any more than uh, close to the uptake where oh, it's, 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 it's their, their water. Very much so, yes, sir. But certainly it would make sense to uh, for Ryan to work with public Telequa Public Works to make sure that they know where the sampling uh, events are. And if they're sampling as well, there'd be some coordination of of uh, data sharing if that's possible. Very much. I think that's that's a reasonable thing to do. Well, they go in, our data goes into a federal database, so but it's, even it's hard to get that back out. I've had is it? You, what what data set are you using? You remember? It goes into Storette. Right, and yeah. I'm pretty. I've been using Storette since the since it was developed, and it's still hard to sometimes go back and find that. Plus, there's a lag between the reporting and the actual posting well, because true. of Q, QA processing at EPA. It would be be nice just to go ahead and as you get the data, even in draft form. Uh, that that way, if there is a hit, they know about it right away. We can do that. I think it's just a, a good interagency collaboration. Anytime you can find an opportunity to do that, let's do it. Uh, in regard to that exact issue right there, uh, Oklahoma State University and uh, uh, the Berry family uh, nursery over on Fort Gibson have set up a, a major testing site to determine uh, what is the best filtration method for nursery runoff. Yep. And they're doing uh, major sampling prior to it going through the uh, test site, which is the way or standard way that all the nursery runoff in the area enters both Fort Gibson Lake and Tinkiller Lake. And uh, so there's some extremely valuable information that's being collected right now that could uh, enlighten us as to potential problems or uh, less of a need to be worried about it. Very sure. So. And uh, I, I really feel like that we need to get into sync with especially OSU because they are the ones that are actually doing the testing and trying to determine uh, number one what is in the water and which method is going to clean it up the best before it goes into the lake. I'm sure they would be interested or willing we, to we, present. I think Pat uh, has uh, a source for contacting uh, the people at OSU sure. and uh, uh, he can share that with Tom but uh, I uh, believe that's Dr. Chad uh, Penn's doing the uh, uh, has a, uh, uh, deployed several tools that uh, are in the drainages that uh, capture the phosphorus traffic. Yeah. And then Dr. Uh, Vogel, I believe, is leading the overall research. Jason. Jason Vogel. Yep. Good team. So yes. uh, it'd be good to, again, keep our finger on the pulse of that project, and I'm sure they'd be thrilled to present uh, to this organization or, or a larger group at the appropriate time. Yeah, there's no sense reinventing the wheel every time. Uh, collaboration is the key, just trying to figure out how to take all these moving parts and make sense and connect them. Yeah. It, takes, it takes a lot of time. Someone's got to do that. We can do that. Okay. Any other questions for the director? Okay, Tom, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Uh, administrative support, Mr. Gwynn. Uh, Blake, uh, regarding the last topic we talked about, uh, the last meeting, excuse me, I believe it was the next, this, the meeting before last, uh, you had asked me to uh, uh, engage with the OSU folks that uh, you had spoke with, and uh, uh, Blake had uh, been contacted by some faculty from OSU that were trying to uh, uh, develop a relationship with uh, Cherokee Nation to uh, do some partnerships and so forth. And uh, sorry, Blake, I forgot to bring that email, the one that I forwarded you mm -hmm. to show you that we were, in fact, doing 
going to be doing that. We're going to have a meeting probably in early December with, with those folks. Uh, but uh, we did, uh, regarding some work they had done on some streamside restorations, I think Mr. Fife was also involved in those. Uh, there was one on uh, uh, the Illinois River. There were a couple on uh, Town Creek here in town, Town Branch here in town. And uh, the first thing we're doing is we're collaborating with them on one of their Public uh, uh, public service announcement signs at the uh, at the spring site up at uh, NSU. It's called the Head of History Spring, and uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to probably do about half of that sign with them. That not only explains the Cherokee significance of the site, which is what we're going to be doing, because of course it's it's located about a thousand foot from uh, where Seminary Hall was rebuilt, but. Uh, OSU will be working on the, uh, the water quality and the stream mechanics aspects of the public service announcement. So, Great. so uh, we, uh, we, we are doing that. Uh, I probably should have mentioned it earlier regarding uh, the passing of uh, uh, our elder Roger Van, but Roger was also a member of the Cherokee Nation uh, Medicine Keepers. He was on their editorial board, and uh, we had had a meeting uh, approximately two weeks ago, and uh, His brother came to that meeting and was chiding, chiding uh, Roger that he wasn't taking as good of care of himself as he needed to be regarding his uh, dietary selections for the day. And uh, Roger informed uh, both of us that uh, the only thing we needed to be worried about was the fact that he was off all next week and be going to be deer hunting. And that was the only thing that mattered. So uh, I just throw that out there for some context. That's right. Uh, regarding my report, you do have that in front of you. Uh, I have a couple of of topics that I'm going to bring up. I don't have the board, I'm sorry. It was in the package that was distributed. Uh, it has the picture of tobacco at the end. Uh, it's a three page report, so it's probably a single page or two pages stapled together front and back. There's what the front of it looks like, the header. Dated on the 30th of October. Uh, I will give you my copy. Can you bring it up here? Uh, could I do it afterwards? I've got my notes written off. <laughs> yeah, actually, just bring it up if you could. Do you have it in front of you? I can uh, make some copies if everybody wants. Do you have it on the... Just bring it up on the computer. Okay. That'll, that'll you guys be fine. Yeah, yeah, and, and, we can, and you can provide the... Uh, okay. we, we can get copies. Okay. Uh, we got them. We're set. We're good. Uh, but I have a couple of items I'd like to bring up for discussion. Okay. Uh, not for discussion in here, but just in case somebody wants to... Uh, for the room and... Uh, of course, the commission. Um, I have a couple of grants that uh, that I would be very, uh, very grateful for any type of, uh, of comment on. Uh, as uh, Mr. Elkins had said, we, we do have a climate change grant, and uh, we went to uh, the Pueblo of Pulaki. Uh, was it last week, Tom? Or week before? before. Week before last. Uh, very nice people, by the way. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful Pueblo. Uh, but. Uh, it was vulnerability assessment, and uh, uh, the world the world of climate change, and I'm not talking about the political world of anthropogenic cause of climate change, I'm just talking about the, the pragmatic issue of the fact that climate seems to be changing. So regarding that, uh, uh, the protocols and processes are really not in place for institutions like, uh, governmental institutions like the Cherokee Nation to travel from uh, beginning to end in a uh, in what I would call a uh, at this point in time a logical progression so uh, those books are still being written uh, but after going through the vulnerability assessment training uh, I spoke with uh, my grant manager uh, Mr. Sean Hart with the Department of Interior uh, and he uh, thought that uh, prior you know, obviously, an entity the size of the Cherokee Nation cannot do a vulnerability assessment, a climate change vulnerability assessment. That's, that's comprehensive. We just can't do that. There, there, there are too many uh, variables at play. But uh, he had suggested that a really good next step for the Cherokee Nation would be to develop a strategic plan to begin looking at the uh, the possible and expected risk of, of climate change, uh, which you, know, you all have already mentioned. So if uh, if anyone in the room or if the, the commission uh, would like to contact me and uh, talk about uh, components that they think that need to be uh, uh, bullet pointed in a, uh, a rough uh, 
climate change a strategic plan for the Cherokee Nation, I'd really welcome those. So uh, uh, that, uh, that invitation is out there and it is a sincere invitation because uh, I, I do believe uh, we're going to need some help uh, just in doing the, the, a broad strategic plan on what the topics are that we're going to look at. So, uh, and then of course uh, uh, the issue of actually doing vulnerability assessments that will come much later and uh, we'll have to uh, uh, determine, you know, based upon the resources we have and uh, the, uh, the law of diminishing returns, which exactly of those risks do we want to do a vulnerability assessment on. Uh, the second question that I would like to pose to the room and to the commission is the fact that uh, I am uh, also sitting on, uh, figuratively, sitting on uh, some uh, DOE uh, excuse me, DOI, uh, Endangered Species Money. Uh, that money was originally slated to do a uh, study regarding the Ozark uh, cave fish. Uh, uh, some of you, most of you would know that probably cave diving is not the world's uh, safest endeavor. And uh, our, uh, the tribe's insurance carrier has, uh, uh, has given some uh, very serious uh, reservations to us about going forward with that work plan. So uh, Mr. Elkins and I have been discussing some possible uh, work plan uh, uh, amendments, excuse me, work plan changes, not amending that one. So if uh, we've talked about everything from uh, 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 beetle ranching uh, to uh, possibly doing some uh, uh, procuring some training and some equipment to determine the presence or absence of, of, uh, of bat populations uh, within the Cherokee Nation. So, uh, but uh, nothing's uh, set in stone, and if anybody has any ESA-related uh, projects they would like to discuss with me, please uh, feel free to contact me. I, I, and once again, that is a sincere invitation. I would uh, really appreciate the, the help. Could you use that money on uh, the uh, pocket muscles like the... Uh... Yes, I could. Yeah, anything that's ESA related, I can do it. Okay, the Osho Bucket. Yeah. I'm really interested in that. Yeah. Be more than happy to talk to, uh, to folks on that. So. Yes? Uh, I, I was just wondering if you've talked to the Peoria Tribe at all about their muscle um, reintroduction I have not. efforts. I have not. They're doing a lot of work to reintroduce muscles in the um, tri state area. Oh. <clears throat> And also, we have cave diapers for our company. Well, you have cave. <laughs> are, do you have insurance? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, because they do a lot of that stuff in Texas. So. They all, all yeah, later. Mostly associated with indemnification forms. That's I, the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, had, I had the cave drivers lined up. It was just our insurance uh, policy writers. Uh, uh, I was not one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, was, was that vulnerability uh, training put on by DOI? It was put on by DOI, yes, those were DOI staffers. Uh -huh. USGS, US Fish and Wildlife Service, and, uh, well, actually one of them was Army Corps of Engineers as well. But uh, I think most, it was actually uh, presented through NCTC, uh, Shepherdstown, Virginia. It was just an off-site NCTC training. So you did not get to go to Shepherdstown for that? No, I've been so to Shepherdstown twice before, and uh, my waistline cannot afford that, so I try to avoid uh, Shepherdstown. <laughs> Those of you who have been to NCTC know what I'm talking about. If you've so, been to the cafeteria, yes, you, 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 eat eat well. you eat well. But Antietam and some of those places are nice. Yeah. Uh, the last thing I have is I've been asked by uh, one or several of the commissioners. I know that Dr. Matlock was one of them regarding uh, the activities that uh, we were doing regarding pollinators. I've included that in the last three reports uh, highlighted in yellow. So uh, those are the activities we're doing. Uh, right now uh, so if you have any questions on that we appreciate the crayon highlighting so that we make we actually pay attention to it that's good and it wasn't uh, that's his words not mine uh, so with that i will uh, cease my report and i'll be happy to answer his questions uh, first obvious question is with the uh, wild tobacco when was this flowering uh that uh, i think the reports were drafted last week sean and it was it was taken that day that's not right. No, this year has been very strange. We're several, you can have this We're several, uh, we started everything about 60 days late. Uh, and due to some uh, 
some fungal issues we've been having with some of our heirlooms. Uh, we're going to have a complete paradigm shift and a lot of our planting is going to occur in July. Uh, we're having a planting date of July the 15th next year. Because of? We have a, a, a lot of our beans are developing fungal issues. Because the soil's too warm, too moist? I think the soil's too cool. Uh, oh. The soil and uh, our nights are getting a little bit too cold. Uh, of course, you know, we have the whole uh, uh, echo region shift from where they want to be growing anyway, so I think that's just the, uh, the weird uh, late arrivals of spring, which, by the way, we've had three in a row now. I know. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to shift uh, all of our beans to a January the 15th, uh, excuse me, July the 15th. That, but FYI, we are still harvesting beans today. Yeah. So, it's, no, it's, it's just, I've got tomatoes blooming. I've got, so, yeah, we're, it's, we've we got <laughs> First frost of this weekend. Are you are you made it outside or in the outside? Yeah, it's, uh, just a, just a strange year. So. It, oh, none of my exterior blackberries really bloomed, uh, but all my blackberries in the hoop house did great. So I'm telling you, nature is just too harsh for plants. Bring them inside. <laughs> Bring them under plastic. Uh, it, it's it's we're going to have to control our growing environment because it's going to just be shifting on us and. It's hard, you know. And, and you know, when you talk about uh, climate change, you know, we always look upon it as a as a negative thing. But uh, for example, the most uh, the most horrific summer we had, which I believe was 07, is that yeah. correct, Ab? Was it 07? Mm -hmm. or, the, the major well, we went from fe we went from feast to fan. Well, which was the which was the hottest and driest? Two a uh, nine nine was the hottest driest. Nine, okay, that one. Yeah. Uh, Seven. You know, was pretty. A lot of our uh, a yeah. lot of our plants did very well during that particular year. So uh, uh, that's probably seven. We had all the rain in the spring, and then well, that was seven. Then it dried yeah. off. Yeah, but uh, I can assure you that tobacco likes it hot and dry. Uh, we published a, an analysis of the impact of, of global climate change on corn production in the United States, focusing on the ERS one heartland region, the, the Corn Belt, and what we show is that we will probably see a net increase of ten percent production in corn. Uh, based upon the most extreme climate predictions in that region, assuming we can get water to them, assuming that they're not drought stressed, because you can plant earlier, they hit anthesis, they tassel before the really hot summer because you can plant earlier. So they're going to tassel at 85 days or so, uh, and then um, I may have that number wrong, but they're going to tassel before the end of August, mid-August, mid when the temperatures are popping over 95, when you start getting penal or yield penalties. So our yield, our models, crop models show that we're going to see an increase in yield because of that earlier planting season uh, across all the way up to the Dakotas and Minnesota. The botanist in me is telling everyone to increase their CO2 uh, uh, emissions. So, but, uh, <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> breathe, people. Breathe. No, this is good. Uh, this is, uh, we're going to be adapting. We've always adapted, but we're going to have to be consciously there's adapting. There's winners and there's losers. There will be winners and there will be losers, and if my favorite uh, euphemism, if climate change is a shark, water is its teeth. Um, too much, too little. Any other questions for sure. our esteemed expert? <laughs> Water's teeth. Mm -hmm. Chomp. Good. Hearing none, thank you, Mr. Gwynn. Let's move on to uh, entertainment. Our meeting with Claremore, the city of Claremore, on our sewage uh, line project is on the 18th, and I'll have a better, uh, I have an update next month for that. We are still meeting our free board in the lagoon right now uh, on our consent order with DEQ. Good. Uh, <clears throat> we have begun clearing the land for housing that's being built in Vianne. We have a uh, the proper permit is in place for that with the DEQ. Uh, we had last month the city of Tulsa Public Works came out to do a walkthrough with our uh, talking about our sewage and a grease hall and things of that nature. Went very well. We had a couple of uh, documents that we were missing from when they had hauled grease. Fortunately, the hauler keeps those records also. We were able to get those. Yep. Uh, we followed up with the people who, who uh, actually deal with those people when they arrived to make sure that they knew what documents they had to have 100% of the time when they left. 
um, <clears throat> Cherokee Springs, currently they are installing the stormwater network feverishly. Uh, once that is for the entire property, once that's in place, uh, the reason that it's become a priority is once that's in place, the part of the land that will be put in trust, they're going to start the trust application. So they are working on the entire network, right, stormwater network right now. Okay. And then finally, the convenience store, our next meeting's on the 17th. On that date, we should have a better timeline on when they're going to be able to do the tank removal because they're coming along, coming along very well on the convenience store. And the uh, timing of that is we get moved into the new convenience store. Once that starts, then they'll start the removal of the old convenience store and the removal of the tanks at that point. Very good. Any questions? Mr. Washam? Uh, I drove by the the casino down at uh, on I-40. Roland. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, that's, that's, it's pretty big. Yeah, we just uh, we just got the certificate of occupancy for the fourth through the sixth floors of the hotel. This weekend they started the simulations where we had employees come in and stay and cause problems and do things like that. Yeah, exactly. They didn't tell me. I, I had one of my own people in on that. And I yes. didn't get to know. That's right. So uh, anyway, uh, and then they're working on issues on seven through nine right now so they can open those also. So they're very nice. Uh, the, the competency that Cherokee Nation is developing in the, in the restaurant and host hospitality industry is profound. Uh, building this competency, this institutional competency, is it's going to serve generations, uh, well beyond gaming. Absolutely, this is really good. And that's very important. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if uh, I'm going to have to bow out and go to another meeting on the construction deal. So All right. Well, thank you for your report. Thank you very much. And we don't have a we have natural resources report, but for obvious reasons, we don't have. Uh, a representative from Mr. Mueller called me this morning and said. There was an issue about the bull hollow with the buffalo. So Any bad issue? Bad no. issue? Uh, apparently something they can handle, but it was an issue. Something get out? Uh, they didn't say. Yeah. <laughs> I think any issue with those buffalo. <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for the, the helicopter news report of the buffalo sitting on the highway staring down the 18 wheelers. Right. That's, that's dramatic and that's power. That's what I want to see. You're saying that like it's a bad thing? No, it's not a bad thing. I'm, that's, that's the symbol of power. That's what I, I want to see it. Uh, and they're bison. They are bison. American bison. We should, we should always respect the difference. You're right. All right, uh, we are ready now for the landfill. No, no more. No. Okay. We've got our report. We do. I'll answer any questions. Uh, What's your might. sense of how things are going? I'm sorry? What's your sense of how things are going? As well as can be expected, still don't have our money from the Cherokee Nation to start working on our sale. We're anticipating about a three-acre sale with the money that the council approved back in September. How much airspace do you have left? We're still hunting and picking until we get the dollars to get our sale. Mm -hmm. Comments? Uh, maybe compliance issues. They're, they're in compliance with the stormwater. Uh, I mean, the leachate. Um, Jackie and I talked a little bit. I haven't been out there for a while, long, but about some of the uh, slopes being too steep, and we're looking for some sort of a, a better means of gauging those instead of doing a flyover contour. And so we're we're trying to find some means to better uh, check that. Uh, but the slopes are too steep because we're still working in them. Once they are. When they're going to be closed, they will be the four to one slope that they should be. The point of compliance is when? Now. That's, that, that's an important consideration, of course. If, if, if you feel there's a compliance, that, that, that they are out of compliance, 
and, and warrant action. That's why we need something to better gauge that. I mean, as Stan said, they're hunting and packing because they have no space. Right, I know. And that's why they're needing to build a cell. And uh, that's kind of the, the changes. Stan asked me why I put changes on there. I just thought the landfill's got to be changing somewhat. They might want to give an indication of where they're going to put the cell, what it's going to mean for them, that type of stuff. Uh, well, and that permitting process will be, be between yes. you and, and, and the land for you. I understand. I, I don't know what to give you all. And we're still waiting on work from the tribe. We cannot move with those issues without certain words from the tribe. Do you understand potential designs or anything? We still have potential three designs. Those are issues that are that are, as they say, above our pay grade. Uh, we have a certain set of responsibilities here, and we will implement those judiciously, but this is not yet there, as I understand it. So, um, and I know that, that uh, again, Secretary Hill is going to be uh, deeply engaged in this issue, and uh, get, we're very excited to have a point person in the administration who's responsible for these issues. So, uh, this is, progress is being made. Which Sarah one? called uh, me a couple of weeks ago and wanted an update, and I gave her an update. Okay. We talked about a few changes, uh, but as I told Blake, because I got an email with the agenda, and I asked Tom what those changes, what, what he meant by that, I don't see. Then I spoke with Blake and understood better what Blake had been wanting for this meeting. But I told Blake I had spoken with Sarah, and uh, she's this coming week we have our board meeting on Wednesday, 11 o'clock, and she is going to come out to the landfill to speak with Sean and Jamie okay. before our meeting. Well, again, our, our role is very clear. We are compliance adjudicators. We are not compliance assistants. But I would like to know why... Uh, and this is just a question, yeah. Tom and Jackie. How can you say a cell is out of compliance with the ratio of not being four to one before it's closed? That's the reason I asked the question about when is the point of compliance. It depends on how the permit is written. Sometimes it's you just never exceed four to one slope. The reason is because it becomes unsafe for exactly. for vehicles v vehicles will roll over on you so it's a fundamental safety issue it's not just the drainage and erosion issue which we can be that. can be controlled at the toe of the slope it's really the uh it's it's the safety issue in so many cases for any construction site you'll have you just can't have a slope more than four to one uh, because it just creates a hazardous environment for workers and so that my mm -hmm. guess is why the permit how the permit is written because that's used, that's common across almost all uh, excavation programs. And if that's the case, then I mean it's it's better that they're highlighting this issue now and there's no accident than that there's an accident and we ask why it wasn't addressed. Uh, so this is I think it's a uh, the, so if you've got and you will have because it's active earth moving equipment on that s slope mm -hmm. and it's greater than four to one slope. There's liability there, oh, yeah. and so you got to be. And it's not just an OSHA issue, right? It, it's it's an environmental issue. I mean, Any of us on a, been on a tractor on that kind of a slope, we understand what we're talking about. Uncompacted slope. Because you you hit a soft spot, tire drops. If you happen to have a bucket load or something, you go over. Yes, I was going to speak up on that. They are they are packing this material on a slope that already exists, so they're already putting it on a slope area, and they're building up. Steep, trying to make a flat area to make their compaction better, but that slope is a lot steeper than four to one. And as you know, as the ground gets wetter and wetter with all the rain, it's going to be getting it could slip. Yeah, it'll slough. That's the other problem. You have mass failure, but the the challenge is just this: that with a four to one slope, you're given a, a certain I mean, that that's your the width at the top determines is limited by the footprint at the bottom. And you need a wider top, and that's why you're going with the wider slope. It's because you need more surface at the top because you're using that airspace, but you got no way to kick it out at the bottom. And I understand that, 
uh, what I'm suggesting is that if it's a compliance issue, um, you need to resolve it. You need to resolve it amicably first, fundamentally second. It's got to be resolved. Uh, if you can, you got to figure out a way to make this work, but it, it we cannot put workers at risk. You know that. You would never do that. Uh, but we can't put people at risk because of the what seems like an immediate urgent issue. Uh, we know that when someone's injured, the priorities become very clear. Let's not let that happen. And we understand all that. We're doing the best we can. And my thoughts are, if the tribe keeps putting us off for whatever reason after we've been approved, then we are going to have to do something drastic. Understood. I understood. Was it the council that, I mean, who approved? The council. The council. And so now they're just, you're just waiting to, for money from? How much money? transfer money into our account. How much money? We got 1.2 million. So Sarah's going to come out and assess she's the she's new sale. She's going to come out and ask questions of staff and uh, one of the other board members okay. next week. So, no action today. No. Sir. Um, I do want to comment on the free board we were talking about earlier. Uh, they have employed a new driver now. They employed that driver at the last of August. Before he was uh, employed in July, they hauled 19 loads from the leachate pond. And in August, they hauled 29 or 27 loads from the leachate pond. After they got their new driver in the month of September, he hauled 60 loads out of the leachate pond. And then last month, he hauled 59 loads out of the leachate pond. So we are back in. It can be over now. this is. That's that's effective management. Thank you for that update. Over 300,000 gallons last month. Mm -hmm. And the reason it hadn't happened before, we only had one CDL, and now we've got two. Yeah, that's good. That's the difference. I know. Uh, I, again, I, we, we sit on this side of the table for a very particular reason with a very particular job to do, and. That's it. And as, as sympathetic as we are, and as much of a cheerleader as we are for your efforts, fundamentally our job is to make sure things get done. And if they don't get done, it just doesn't matter what. Uh, it just doesn't. And yeah. so, and you you understand that we've had this conversation. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next step would be call chief. I know. Well, our, our we, we no. I give you his number. Now we we have a very specific set of steps, and we will implement. implement we have implemented those steps, and we will do so again if necessary. But uh, let's we'll, we'll endeavor to work with you to ensure that it never becomes necessary, if possible. But if it does, we do. Uh, we do surgery with a chainsaw. We can only do so much, and then then compliance orders, uh, notice of non-compliance, compliance orders, and then ultimately penalties, uh, civil and criminal. That's that's our trajectory. It's all we've got. We only recommend. We don't. It's the attorney general's office. To implement to go beyond that, but yeah, and then it sits there I know, well, forever. Well, hopefully, we're not now that Sarah's <laughs> maybe you'll have a very specific year that you know that can actually get things done because it seems like it just kind of well, it's a difficulty with uh, with governmental processes where you have distributed authority. We're not only waiting on dollars from the tribe, but we're waiting on uh, word from the chief. Last time I spoke with him, uh, we spoke, to, spoke about options, and uh, I told him, he was asking me how long the three-acre sale, if that's what we built, would last. I said, it depends. Do you want us to just take in the trash we're taking in now, or do you want us to say yes to a couple of Arkansas entities that are biting at the bit to get their trash into the landfill? And he said, hmm. Let me think about that. I'm telling Still you. Still waiting on work. I'm telling you, we need a different model than digging a hole and burying stuff. And I think if you had, if if you had a a, a plan for implementing a, a waste repurposing, re, recycling, diversion process there, a MRF, uh, maybe a small incinerator, 
um, other so that the amount of actual material that and or composting for organic stuff so the amount of material that actually goes underground could be a tenth of the loads that come in and 90 percent of it could go to other purposes um, you could get a premium for that because everyone who brings you trash can then claim that diversion rate mm -hmm. including the university of arkansas which which has a commitment to being a zero waste institution in the next five years that's really fun and good, but to start all that, it's sixty got million dollars. Sixty million is about what it would take to set that up. I know. I don't see the tribe submitting that much money, Doctor Matlock. I, I well, well that's not we at our last meeting we did discuss uh, trying to. Uh, there was discussion among the commission about how we deal with waste in all fourteen counties, right. mm -hmm. and so it, it has bubbled up to now we're we're talking about it. Certainly, Absolutely. and certainly Secretary Hill would be brought into this at some point in the near future. Yes. And uh, having the chairman who uh, represents sustainability for the U of A, mm -hmm. I can only imagine that what he's learning will be passed along to help us and uh, I, their potential. I think there's huge opportunity economically. It sounds like a lot of money, but this is a business venture. It's not a, this, right. this would be, this is how you transform what is currently, in essence, a service to the community into a growing concern, right. transforming it. And the, that transformation is possible. Uh, but it could still be, provide that service to the community and still charge a premium to those organizations who are willing to pay for it. And there are many of us who are willing to pay for it. University of Arkansas will be paying. Right now, we'll have to haul this material to Tulsa uh, in order for that to happen. Because the fact is, no enterprise can operate without generating waste right. in their current and, life and that's system. Why our our cost is so low, which Commissioner Biden has commented on in the past, that we charge not a whole lot. But it's because as soon as we raise our prices, the Tulsa's waiting, Shogi's yeah, waiting, Shawnee Town's waiting, Salisaw's waiting. And it may be that if the market is that saturated, that's a, decision, a business decision that has to be made too. If you don't need that much, if the capacity is being met elsewhere, then, then why are we doing it? That's a fair question. Well, 4200 4235 I believe, was tonnage in yeah. October. $17.58, I believe it was. Yep. Just right at 75000 and some change. Uh, from an economic standpoint, it seems like that if we're going to charge a, uh, that kind of rate, that we, we need to get down to where that 75000 covers the cost and perpetuates the operation, whatever that solid waste operation Break is going to be. Elsewise, else it's not sustainable. Right. And, and that's it, it needs to be a higher tonnage, at least 400 tons a day. What does that do? What's the, and that's a six-day week? No, five-day five week. week. Five-day week. We are week. open on Saturdays, one Saturday a month. Oh, okay, so that's 2,000. That was so. a cost-cutting measure. So you're about 60% of where you need to be then? If the tribe decides to take in other trash. But the challenge, of course, is where do you put it once you get it? That's what we're discussing. We need to sell. Yeah. Well, how long will three acres last? Mm -hmm. My estimate with what we're bringing in now would be between five to ten years. And if you're taking in 400 tons a day? No. What we're taking in now, about if, if, 200. Okay. If we bring in 400 tons a day, it would be less. Yeah. So, again, this is... We're all very interested in this, but it's not our responsibility, um, to be clear. It's just not. Uh, I'm glad you're asking questions. Yeah. Just like I'm glad Blake and I have had conversations with some work he's doing, specifically with Adair County, and in some uh, alternatives for solid waste. Sure. It's great just to hear people talking about yeah. it. Because when I started out, nobody wanted to talk trash. Nope. Nobody. I know. It was not a good subject. So this is great. I agree with you. Even though sometimes I yeah, blow man. my talk with you all, but this is great. Yeah, so yeah, family talking there. trash a long uh, time. A long Mostly time. about you. I know. <laughs> okay. All right, well, any other questions for the landfill? With yes, sir. A comment, Mr. Chairman. I think the meeting we had in September was probably the most productive meeting we had, Fan, uh, concerning the landfill, and unfortunately, you were not there. But... You know, there's a lot of comments that could be made, but I think the most important one is the very last of the uh, of the minutes, which stated the consensus 
of the commission is that all commissioners will sign a letter to Chief Baker conveying that the commission would like to meet with him or ask him to provide a written response as to how the commission is to proceed under existing Cherokee Nation laws and regulations. And I think that's something that I don't know, it hasn't been done because, you know, I don't, I haven't signed it. But I think that we need to, to let the administration and, and, and the council and particularly the chief know just what situation that we're in. And the fact that uh, as a commission, even though we don't have the money or anything, the tribe needs to put enough money in so you can get on your feet. Right now you're, you're in a hole and you keep digging that hole deeper. And you know, I think it, it, even if it's just a quick fix so you can kind of get out of the hole and maybe at that time there would be a possibility of, of increasing the tonnage in there. Mm -hmm. But you're going to have to get out of the hole first. Mm -hmm. and, well, and you well, know this needs to be looked at as a service. I don't know how many other counties have wildcat dumping problems. And Adair County would be back in the same situation as we were years ago. We all have them. Yeah. But it's getting be worse, worse than Arkansas. If the wasn't there. Uh, yeah. Well, it would be way worse. Way well, yeah. worse. Well, you know, the question. But I, didn't, I didn't know that you all had had such a discussion at the September meeting that I did not attend. Well, it's. A, to a certain extent, it's, it's, that has happened by the appointment of a Secretary of Natural Resources. Yeah, that's what I want to clarify yeah. is that we took that action in September, but then the appointment to uh, Secretary Hill and a subsequent conversation that Chairman Matlock and myself attended with uh, Pat Wynn, there was some discussion about, about that particular issue, and we were uh, basically came away from the meeting tell me if I'm reporting this wrong or reporting it wrong is that we were going to give her a little bit of time to think through what the commission had uh, proposed in September as far as meeting with the uh, chief or sending out a letter. Now was I was the not chief there. Chief was not there. But this meeting was initial meeting yeah. with the secretary as she was coming on she gave us kind of a 30,000 foot uh, perspective as to where she thought that she was going to be heading off mm -hmm. and looking for the EPC to uh, uh, support her and give her a little bit of uh, mm -hmm. uh, time to uh, uh, develop and, and to uh, see what the uh, different uh, programs were going to be moved or uh, relocated to her uh, under her uh, oversight and Pat was there as well. And, uh, yeah, the I read her white paper. Yeah. that she gave to Chief, but if, if there was a motion made at the September meeting for a letter, I hope the Commission will follow up on that motion if it passed with the Commission, whether you all met with her or not, or whoever you all met with, you're going to put it in writing if, if that was brought forward and if it was passed by the Commission. And now it's November. The well, we, can, we conveyed that to the Secretary. The letter, the letter was submitted, drafted by and council and submitted, and that was part of the decision making. And the letter was a very gen, a general letter of expressing concern about decisions. And that letter, I signed the letter, uh, okay. and that letter is, uh, was uh, at on the heels of that letter. There was an appointment of the secretary of natural resources. The letter didn't drive that. I'm not implying that at all. It just happened to coincide with the decision that was already well in process. Uh, but the fact is. Uh, the, the letter became moot. The, the, the letter letter became less necessary. I understand. Uh, but the the the, imp, the purpose of the letter was that we did not. We felt that the, the commission felt that there was not adequate voice with the administration. We didn't have a, a way to talk to the administration. Mm -hmm. Now we do. Good. That was that was really the purpose. So we and didn't I'm have. I'm not trying to tell you your business, but it'd be nice if your other commissioners knew about the letter. I assumed that, that that was circulated to all the commissioners. I assumed mm -hmm. uh, that came after. Uh, okay, well then we can certainly. It's very likely that the council decided because of the subsequent appointment that it was no longer a relevant communique because she wrote the letter and she's now the person who would receive the letter, and so it didn't really make sense to do that. I'm guessing that it was a moot point, and that's the reason that it, it was not an intentional. Uh, and and the, the content of the letter was exactly what you said. So it was. Uh, uh, I don't see any, um, a lot of moving parts, there's no intention to not comply with the wishes of the Commission, 
there was just sounds like the landfill. Well, no, we <laughs> we we asked for a, a way to, to speak to the administration, and we and what we have is the Secretary of Natural Resources. Now, it's, again, it's a, it's not only did we get we didn't just get a door opened, we got a building opened. Uh, a new a new administrative uh, position in the cabinet for this issue and that's that's profoundly different than where we were in September profoundly uh, we've been I've been at this job for 10 years and for 10 years we've been talking about this so uh, in answer to your to your concerns yes I think that this is I'm, I'm sorry I thought I assumed that the, this was distributed to everyone I maybe that it's just a moot point because the person the letter who wrote the letter got the letter <laughs> um, I'm just guessing. Let's see if we get a copy of the letter to the letter from the letter. Yes. Uh, and so again, it's part of it's the, the good news. The incredibly good news is that that the issue has been addressed in, in a very uh, aggressive way. The issue has been addressed. We now have um, a go-to person for this commission to uh, to work directly with the administration. So that. Uh, address and, your concerns and, and that's appreciated my, own, my only concern and, and let me be just real frank about this to me uh, there's just been another layer of bureaucracy put into it and when you have to go through someone instead of to the chief which uh, I think the chief is, is very susceptible to, to, to realizing what the situation is with the landfill and you know I would like to hear from him directly is what he would like to to see happen to the landfill. I don't speak for the chief, obviously, but if I were the chief, what I would say is I, I have, his job is to have very competent people administering these things and that the Secretary Hill is certainly more able to address this, that, that's her job for him. Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not questioning her the job, I'm just saying that that's one more step to go through, whereas I like to go to the chief. What, what I've kind of observed is that Sarah is a very competent person and was at every meeting and could hear our request. And now she's been bestowed this great position and she's no longer gonna be here <laughs> because she's got so much on her plate. But, right, but now, again, the, the, this is representative governance. It's, uh, the, the chief is not King Solomon. He cannot decree. Every, we have process and procedure for everything we do. And he's so- the president of our Cherokee Nation. Right, and it's not, which means it's a, it's a, it's, there's a procedural process. It's not a, it's not governance by decree, it's governance by procedure. And what we now have is a procedure. We did not have a procedure before. Exactly. Uh, and so now we have a procedure and, uh, and having Secretary Hill in the position she's uh, assumed is going to be profoundly important to, a, to this discussion now. Uh, and right, we, uh, while she may not be at every one of our meetings now, uh, we have someone in the administration, in the cabinet, who directly governs, who, who directly knows what we're doing and how we're doing it, who understands our legal framing, who understands our environmental issues, water issues. That didn't have, that was not there in September. It's there now. So I think, I, I, wanted, I want to make sure we celebrate that. I, I would like to point out, you know, she wasn't able to make it to this, to this meeting because she already had something that's been scheduled for a long time. Right. But I think we have to recognize that this, she's only been appointed in this position for like, what, 60 days, 70 days? Less than that. It, it takes time to pull together and tie in all of these departments into a cabinet level uh, department that, sits, that stands on its own. And so I anticipate that you know, the front end work is, is, is great on, on, the, on that end. And I, I anticipate that once that gets pulled together, uh, you know, there'll be a lot more, uh, she'll, she'll be, available a lot more to address these, these issues specifically in person. What we have to be building is a process because if we build relationships, a governance of relationships, when those relationships change, that is, we have elections, the, the process fails. We have to build a process as independent of relationships and that's what we're doing here. That's why having a cabinet member, having a cabinet position, whoever's in that cabinet position now will have certain sets of responsibilities and whoever's sitting in your chair for this, uh, from the term, from that secretary's office will have direct communication systems that just did not exist 70 days ago. Uh, we've been at this for a, a decade trying to get this to happen. Uh, so I, I understand the frustration 
for my colleagues, I definitely do, and I and I respect it, uh, and I also respect the, the the desire to have that impact. I think we'll have a bigger voice for the next f forever than we had before, because of of this administration change, and I celebrate it. I think it's positive in every form. Uh, I talked to Sarah just the other day about the EPC meeting, and her apologies because she couldn't be here. Right. But she also wanted me to remind you, she's at your disposal. Yeah. And you have her phone number, call her. If you have issues with that, call her. Uh, she, she's there for you. And I mean, she takes calls all the time. She does for me, and I know she will for you. So if you have a legitimate, I say legitimate, if you have concerns, call her. She'll, she'll talk to you about it. I mean, I know she has chief's ear. So, I mean, this is a great thing for us. Yeah. So, you know, if you have concerns, pick up the phone, give her a call and say, look, we have issues here and we've discussed this at the EPC and uh, we need your help in whatever manner. And she'll, she'll do it. She's a good lady. She's gonna, she, this is a great thing. It is. It's powerful. I hope it does help because the way it looks from my perspective is that the landfill is there. It's, it's a huge problem. It's been for years. It seems like they want it to make money, but they don't want to put any money in it to help make money. And they want it to sustain itself. Well, you can't <laughs> without some money. Uh, they can't take new business in because they don't have a sale. It's, it's a rock between, a, it, you know, they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. So I think, I hope that Sarah can convey that to the council and to the chief. This, so one or the other gets done. They either work toward shutting it down or work toward making a, a money-making business. And what you've characterized is about that much of the overall issue. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, just looking at it right now, I mean, Jackie and I have talked about it. We talk every day. Yeah. If they had a three-acre sale, that may be enough just to keep them into compliance. Not put anything in it, but just to keep the cells that are already there, push them into compliance. I mean, I there are a lot of issues out there. And the, the decision to close is not a trivial one either. Eventually no, all no, landfills no. close. Mm -hmm. Eventually they all close. And then we have that issue of, yeah. of uh, dumps. Yeah. I mean, we've had it before. But I think it's a, it's a political issue to, if you shut it down, it's gonna be crazy. If they don't shut it down, it's, it's going to be, be crazy. crazy. So, um, so I think so we that, got crazy coming. Yeah, I think <laughs> that you know Cherokee Nation always wants to be innovative in yeah. the best of the best. Certainly. Why don't they invest like they invest in casinos and healthcare bison and, and healthcare because in an incinerator? No. Don't jeopardize to, healthcare. No, it but is. I mean invest the kind of money. That would make it the state of art, the state of the art where, like, the University of Arkansas could come in. But this is just pennies, what Tom is talking about, yeah. compared to the Title V permit that we're going to need. Yeah. We haven't gotten that's for closure. specifically that's you know, to stay that's, open. That's that's stay open. right now. Yeah. So we haven't got those specifics from our engineer yet because we can't pay for them. We have no money to pay for them. But I'm anticipating we're going to have to have a full-blown Title V yeah. permit. When that happens, we have to go to EPA because Tom and them can't handle it here. We, Tom has estimated $7 million for that. So someone's going to have to ask the tribe for $7 million for a Title V permit well, on top of everything else. Before we ask the tribe for anything, my recollection is that the Cherokee Nation's been down this path nine, of times. Nine, no, nine or ten times on this landfill, and we're probably approaching $30 million in expenditures that have been made after the landfill oh, I don't know. over time. Uh, Pat, you got any insight? Yeah, I think it's nine times and $27 million from the <laughs> Okay. So, so, so you exaggerated. So uh, I overstated <laughs> it, but... The, the fact of the matter is, if we've done $27 million and we're getting ready to put another million two into it, we're at 28. And it, we really need to think this through and figure out, we want to start with the end in mind. Where do we want to be when this game shuts down? And try to get folks to come around. Because that's what they're doing with the casinos. 
That's what they've done with health care. That's what they've done with roads. They know where they want to go, but we've been fragmented on our approach related to the landfill, or for that matter, solid waste in all 14 counties. I agree. I agree. Okay. And recycling. The statutes are clear that are being reviewed that we're supposed to be recycling right now. And we are nowhere even close to that mark. We, we fall under recycling because the tribe does have a building down there that's full of stuff. I know. So we're, we're clearing that hurdle. I know. So uh, I'm going to take the chairman's prerogative here and suggest that we have uh, we have that? no. We've 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 chewed on an issue uh, a long time here. We're not going to digest it today. But I just want you to know that getting a new cell is not the solution to the problems that are out there. Oh, we understand. It's a band -aid. And adding to the 29 million that you and Pat have talked about. 28 too. We don't forget our loan that the board stuck their neck out on. I know. How much is that? 1.5 million. 30 million. I've, I've, I've vindicated myself. Right, you're vindicated. You're vindicated. You're, vindicated. Yeah. You're, you're counting. Good work. Can I say uh, one thing? You may. Uh, the one thing I think that everybody needs to realize is that if uh, the tribe and the board decide to shut the landfill down today, <laughs> or if they decide to keep the landfill going for a number of years, none of those, those are all very long-term much closer to a decade type processes than they are something that will actually happen within a year or even five years. You 10 know. years of continued investment, X million a year to hit closure. The, the, nothing is going to happen quickly regardless of decision. It's going to be a very long process. And it's after taken closure, since, it's forever. It's, it's taken since 1982 to get to the position we are now. And uh, uh, like I said, if the, the, the tribe and the board decided that they were shutting, going to close it down today, they probably have 10 years of, uh, of waste receipt and, uh, and uh, soil manipulation to do before it actually gets shut. So uh, to, uh, get to, to recontextualize our discussion, this is all very valuable and interesting civic discussion and civil discussion too, very positive civil discussion about a complex issue for which we all care about. Our responsibility as a commission is fairly limited here. Our opportunities and, and power as a commission is very limited here. We enforce the rules and regulations of the Cherokee Nation. That's what we do. We enforce. We do not, we do not create compliance strategies. We just don't. That, that, that issue was addressed 10 years ago with this commission. Uh, we just don't do that. That's uh, so uh, we appreciate all the, uh, the passion and interest, um, but for now we're going to move to the next issue unless you have any other final comments. I would make one final comment, and, and as a businessman, uh, I understand that, that before you can become productive, and we would like to see it become productive, which it may never become, but you've got to prime the pump. Yeah. I'll just stop with that. If you don't prime the pump, you're nowhere. And as, as a business, and, and yep. Ed knows what my business is out there, and I prime the pump all the time, and that's why we have been successful, because we've been willing to spend the money to become successful. Thank you, sir. No, I that's absolutely appreciate your position, and I'm sure the fan appreciates the, the words of support, because it can be a lonely place. Um, the, I think, though, you're right. We, we keep things in compliance, and I think that our frustration was that at every meeting there's some issue that yep. we well, what do we do as a commission to keep them compliant when they can't keep compliant so yep. we're just spinning wheels we're in well, a muddy road right now we're 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 the hammer that falls that's our job we're the hammer that falls if you can't be compliant that's our job it is not our job to keep anyone in compliance if someone's not in compliance in any of our organizations it's our responsibility to recommend enforcement action uh, to the attorney general's office that is our job and that's we're a civic adjudication body um, that's what self-governance is and it's so we just have to make sure we as, as passionate members of the Cherokee Nation we want there to be success but we have to remember that our role in this uh, behind this table is very explicit I think it's powerful and valuable to have these discussions that's why we're doing it because it gives context to what ultimately happens if we have to if we have to implement compliance orders if we have to implement penalties if we have to imp it recommend uh, civil or criminal 
adjudication. That is our job to do. It's important that everyone understand our perspective. So the commission would, if we see that they cannot stay in compliance, which seems like there always is an issue, when does it, when does it happen that the, the commission says, we need to shut it down? It's, not, it's a dangerous place. It's not in compliance. We've been down that path before. Um, so they would take our recommendation. We would, I guess, now recommend it to Sarah. We did it 10 years, how many years ago? Yeah, we leveraged a yeah, fine. Over a million dollars in fines and, and shut it down, closed it. And that was, it was, a, it was not a politically happy place. Talk about crazy town. It was not a politically happy place for any of us to be in. I fielded a number of calls. So what was the result? Well, it wasn't officially closed. <coughs> it was closed to people bringing in trash. Yeah. still well continued to bring sludge which meant the tribe didn't have to go into regulated closure right so it was it thank you for the closed. thank you for the clarification it's an important one yeah uh, we yeah we don't have the authority to close a, a venture that's not our job unless there is criminal if, if, if we feel like there's criminal uh, activity or criminal intent we can recommend to the Cherokee marshals through the Attorney General's office that they take and any venture that they take action so this is and again in, in the, the vast things that governments do, we have a very limited role. It's an important role because what we do is we translate concerns of the community and concerns of the, of the environmental programs officers into action. When, and we are the ones who say it's time to take action or wait, give them a little more time. That's why we are con convened as a civilian uh, mm -hmm. panel is so, because we're presumed to have that sort of broader context of, of uh, a perspective to know when to, to, to exercise caution and when to move aggressively. And we've been doing that, I think, very effectively. One last comment to Commissioner Carson. I'm glad she brought that up. And I can say this because I'm actually just a citizen. Mm -hmm. I serve on a board for the Cherokee Nation, but I'm not an employee. That's this us too, what, by the way. This is what scares me about self-governance. Ever since Public Law 93638 came out, and it's to me, it's a carrot that's being dangled in front of all the tribes, 563 of us in the United States, that says, we'll give you money, you can run your own programs, we'll give you a grant, you decide how you're going to run it. That's what it says, basically. The commission would be an entity that should have that hammer. Just like EPA, if they wanted to, they've got the hammer. <clears throat> but, and I'll go back to previous administrations. Previous administrations, if they didn't like somebody bringing down the hammer, they changed the group. That's scary because we're talking about the environment. We're talking <coughs> about taking care of our people. So, I'm not a proponent of self-governance at all. <laughs> I think we should hold the United States government to the extent of our treaties that have been broken since time began with them. But we need to hold them to task to do what they're supposed to do for the tribes. And I think Public Law 93638, and I might be wrong, I think it was put there to eventually terminate tribes because we're going to mess up sometime or another as long as we're political entities and that's what we are things change just like that at elections as a citizen of a tribal nation that is how I feel and that's here you're going to have the last word on this issue today thank you very much <laughs> what I love about these commission meetings though we go from very mundane sort of day-to-day -day stuff to big broad sweeping civic um, governance issues in almost five minutes Sorry. no I love it it's just and frankly it's a perspective I had not heard and it's I'm still You're chewing kidding. no it's, I have not and I'm chewing on it I've heard the perspective that it's a way to get the federal government off the hook that's the perspective I heard but not that it was the the, that it was sovereign a sovereign nations are supposed to be sovereign we take care of ourselves you would think we still would have government money coming in yeah I, let's have that discussion and i do like this discussion another day probably at another forum okay, sorry no but i like it very much 
Um, so let's move on now uh, to the environment. Let's see, Attorney General. So Chad, what do you got for us today? I have no, uh, no available water plan. Yeah, can you tell us? I've missed the last two meetings. Can you tell us what I've missed? Where are we going? And when are we going to get there? With, we're talking about specifically with water plan. Water plan. Um, I don't have an update for that at the moment. We're, we're kind of in a holding pattern with, with this change from Sarah leaving. She, she kind of spearheaded all, all of those issues as the Deputy Attorney General. We probably haven't had a water group meeting in two months because so, of all this. Well, do we have a report from our consultants in Colorado yet? Um, I, I believe that we do, but I don't know the substance of that report. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll give you till January. That's an arbitrary deadline that means nothing, uh, but there you go. No hammer. How do you hammer the people who hold the hammer over you? It's like, yeah, yeah be careful how, if what happens there. Uh, but, but as you know, our role of our office is certainly going to change with the administrative changes that are going on with, with Sarah coming in as the Secretary of Natural Resources. So, Forward, better direction. I'll have more, more information to share with you guys. Good. She's still going to be working on the water plant, right? I, so. I suspect that's a major part of her portfolio yeah. as a secretary. Uh, again, I think, I think the idea is that this one's going to give her an opportunity to focus more of her time on these issues that have been otherwise pushed aside. In keeping with fans' earlier comments, I can tell you if we're going to ever govern our own natural resources, we have to have this uh, governance structure in place if the federal courts are ever going to presume that we have the authority to administer our own affairs with with re regards to water rights. Uh, so I think this is incredibly positive too. So. And, and I'd, I'd like to reiterate that you know, this, this is a huge change. And it's going to take a little bit of time. I know there's frustration and other things are moving as fast as other people would like, but it, it is such a substantial change and it's going to take a little bit of time. Absolutely. We're thrilled. And if I, if I could, I'm going to have to step out. I apologize. Right. Hit the road, man. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Elkins, you're back up on a statute review. We're, we are story. exactly where we have been. We're, we're still working with that organization that uh, contracted to do our stuff. We've gotten the first set of... Uh, did they do better the next time around? They didn't do it again, and Sarah's handling it with them. So. Oh, okay. Have we paid them anything? Uh, yeah, it's not for the work that they did, yes, but all right. Well, I'm sorry that didn't work out. Let's. No, no, I'm not saying it didn't work out. It's. Let's let's hope it being does. Amended. Okay. Good. Industrial Lagoon. Uh, that was uh, uh, a point that uh, Commissioner Fletcher asked me to put on here. Uh, if you'd like to give a little over, I don't know what all you've heard from uh, DEQ. You said it was somewhat a thorn in their side. Been a thorn in my side for uh, 12, 15 years. So I can give you an overview of it. I don't know if you remember it from days gone by. Uh, there is a, the Cherokee Nation has an industrial park just south of uh, Stillwell. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, wastewater, it's, it's sewage, goes into a, a lagoon that is then uh, a, a two section lagoon, I believe, two tier, and then it uh, sprays up on the ground. Uh, it has leaked in the past. Yeah. We have put bentonite clay down in, and that's the secondary uh, part of the lagoon. We put bentonite, bentonite clay down through there and thought we had fixed that. I know three times, <laughs> this, I've been on every one of these, and I think the third time, I really thought it was going to happen. We had planned, had it designed, had the money to run that sewage up north back into uh, uh, still well. It's no longer an active lagoon, or oh, just, it's an active lagoon. Oh, you were talking about to to redirect the, the discharge the into the municipal. Right, right. Lake. And uh, the problem there are several problems with it. One is the city of Stillwell, it's a city, would be accepting sewage from outside of the city. Uh, the Cherry Tree Water District that that provides the water for that area buys its water from Stillwell. But if they, like in a normal city, if, you're, if you don't pay your uh, sewage, whatever that is, the city has a recourse of turning your water off. They don't have that to there. Because individual, if they, if they metered everybody around there that has water from that, that goes into that sewer lagoon, all of Cherry Tree addition.
goes into that besides the municipal uh, I mean the uh, industrial plant there facet that makes right. uh, filters if if for some reason somebody didn't pay their uh, sewage bill they don't have a mechanism to make Cary Tree Water District turn off the tap um, and they want that sort of control that's the reason the city of Stillwell isn't is, well, is there's it? several reasons at one time the Cherokee Nation said we will make sure that's paid one way or another uh, they said they finally said yes we've came that close to digging and for whatever reason somebody got an issue and said no oh, stop we're not doing that now and part of that was the a board of directors of uh, Stillwell authority a utility authority uh, th those sorts of interagency, intergovernmental relationships are tricky. They have legacies. They have long memories. We have had and MOAs I, from so, the. So where, how does this impact us? Is there a violation in that? I don't know. I, I I don't know if there's a violation currently. There hasn't been. All right. First of all, whose jurisdiction is that lagoon? Is I that asked yours TV or is it, I mean, I you know my position. I'm the chair of the EPC. I have very little very little power except for what I say uh, and it doesn't carry much weight right. but what I can tell you that we sit on this side of the table and we have we read our regulations and we understand those and if we don't enforce our own regulations we don't have any power Bingo. Uh, we don't have any authority and what I can tell you that is if we if we defer a, authority to the state of Oklahoma when it's convenient to us then we have no jurisdiction that then they that gives them the authority to come back and assume jurisdiction when they want to uh, so either it's our jurisdiction or it's not. Do we have a clear? It's, it's trust land. It's ours. So it's our jurisdiction. Do we? It is. Do they have an o ODE, uh, o Oklahoma Department of Environmental Quality permit, NPDES permit? No. So who, do they have an NPDES permit? No. How do they have a wastewater discharge facility without an NPDES permit? Uh, it's been there forever. Doesn't matter. I know that. Doesn't matter. They need an NPDES permit. No. That is. They, Not since it's on trust land. Uh, they need an NPDES permit. We the tri, every, every discharger in the Cherokee Nation needs a permit. It doesn't discharge that I know of. Tom. I don't know. It, it sprays, so it discharges. It's Even if it's land application, right. that falls under a permit. Yeah, it's I didn't know it discharged. Every, every every even 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 a lagoon even yeah. a lagoon that that evaporates total, lagoon. total has to have a permit. Uh, and if it's either going to be a federal permit. I agree that it doesn't need a state permit, it, but it needs a federal permit, even on trust land. And either the state enforces that or Region 6 enforces that. Those are the way these things are going to work. Or we enforce one of them. Yeah, the, I mean, sorry to say, I mean, the, the tribe. The NPDES is, permit then would have to come from Region 6? Region 6 or the tribe. We do not have an NPDES granting process. We do not, because we do not have a water quality standards framework. And that's something that I've been harping about for years, too. Uh, if we're going to manage our own affairs, we need to have management mechanisms for our own affairs. But I would say in this case, be careful what you ask for, but in this case, uh, it's clear to me that they need a permit. Well, we, we thought we had that lagoon fixed well over 15 years ago, Tom. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember going out there and, uh, several times with you. How many more of these legacy issues are laying around out there? Sir, there are lagoons that the Housing Authority owns all over the 14 counties. Can I request an audacious, audacious thing, an inventory of those lagoons? Oh, God. <laughs> sure you can. These, the, uh, this, this lagoon, as best I recall, was was not really designed or built to sure. what we would consider a modern lagoon. You know, right. like human waste lagoons are built, uh, the standard is 10 to the minus, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 7 or about 500 gallons per day leachate out of the bottom and sides. They use compressed cycle. clay liners or, or, or synthetic liners. Okay. And then right. this this lagoon was basically, as I recall, has some rock strata in it and it's, it's not uniform. I built ponds in these areas. This is, a, what it is is really kind of a square pond. Yeah. With two, a, with a two excuse me, thank you. Irregular bottoms that would not pass today's standard as he even represented. Yeah, he's running away at a good time. Now, uh, so let's... Uh, I believe it was built by the Indian Health Service. No, no. Uh, here's that had records. All right, let's not... Let's not oh, let, before the tribe comes. Yes. Let, let us assume that all blame is shared it's equally. 
<laughs> and, that, and that we have a, we have equal responsibility for legacy issues. The question is, what's our responsibility as a commission? That's the question before us. And our responsibility as a commission is to ensure that all environmental regulations under the, the orange books of the Cherokee Nation that we all have copies of are being are in compliance or are being being enforced. This is a clear example to me of where we have a legacy issue that is outside of compliance. It is an unregulated, unpermitted discharge. It is. It is regulated, I would say, and I'm talking for Lisa, Sean. Okay, so it's it's the regulated. The environmental health program inspects those lagoons. But in, under the environmental reg. Environmental health program. But under the environmental code, the environmental protection code, it is regulated. Yes, you're correct, you, and that is, you're absolutely correct. It is un, out of compliance. Right. The, because we do but not have permits. Lisa should have a list of the. I'm trying to help Tom. Yes. About that. Anyway, yeah. Lisa should have a list of all those lagoons. It's a historic lagoon built by Indian Health Service or the Housing Authority or whomever. Can we have. This is a <coughs> wonderful topic for us to take up at our next meeting. It's a wonderful topic for us to take up at our next meeting. Can we have a briefing on what we know and what we should do? Not what we can do. Maybe that's part of the briefing too, but what we should do first in order to bring all of those into compliance and then what we can do to bring them in compliance. Can we have that discussion? Yeah, and all the legacy lagoons for the housing authority, this is an issue because they're not on trust. So are, are they, do they have Oklahoma permits? Nope. What they've done and, and, and what has happened is DEQ has kind of backed off on anything Cherokee Nation or housing authority does because Although it's not trust land, they pay taxes in lieu of... No, I understand. Or money in lieu of taxes. So what that means is, again, we have either jurisdiction or responsibility, one or the other. Sometimes it's deferred responsibility, it's just it well inferred that. responsibility, it's not overt jurisdiction. But one way or the other, thank you, Pat. We, uh, so since Mr. Gwynn just left, make him responsible for reporting. Sounds now. good. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> I will tell you that when those lagoons were built, it was just for the cluster of Indian homes there. I fully it's understand that. It's historically had a, a pump problem. Oh, no, I, and I'm very familiar with these issues. I am just, I, I have know, to tell you, I'm just surprised. The tribe has built facet there, and now donated foods is there. I understand. In Texas, well, what doing. In, in, in my time in Texas, we call those maquiladores. We call those... Uh, 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 colonias, and, uh, uh, I'm sorry, colonias, and the doors were the industries that were illicitly dumping. There were colonias. We had housing that was built without sewer systems, without infrastructure, with common collection systems, and unpermitted discharge. Those were colonias. And the colonias were, uh, existed all up and down the Rio Grande River, all the way to Interstate 10. Uh, now they've moved all the way to Dallas. And they had lagoons. They had all, everything from a uh, four inch PVC pipe from the toilet to lagoons. Uh, everything in between. And one thing that's, and it's a side topic, but one thing that's interesting about these, when they built a dozen or 24 houses where they didn't have infrastructure for like that, they would build a lagoon. Each of these homes had whatever amount of property, and they were, when they paid those off, that property became them. That common lagoon, housing authority forgot about it, nobody ever did anything, trees grew up in them. Oh, no, I understand these, these legacy challenges. Right. That's just what I'm running into. Yeah, so, so here's, here's what we need. This thank is you, Blake. Yes, thank you. <laughs> You've done well. Good job, Blake. Yes. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> no, well, 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 this is clearly our responsibility. It this is, is our This is clearly this side of the table issue. We spent a lot of time talking about stuff that's not. This is clearly ours. We need to know, and then we need decisions to make. We need Can to I ask, are there issues with this yeah. one? The way this came about, Tom, uh, I'm setting up a, or working with several people to go right. kind of set up a litter control uh, meeting on Friday, right, the 13th right. at 10:30 at the Adair County Courthouse, and we're trying to get the different entities together from the county commissioners to the uh, program uh, administrator out of Oklahoma City, the DEQ representative from Salisaw. Uh, and uh, the judge uh, for the Adair County to sit down and, and talk about ways to 
uh, reduce the pollution and uh, roadside litter uh, dumping uh, issues. And in, in a conversation with the DEQ agent, uh, I asked how things were handled through his office that regarded Indian land. And he said uh, he runs into, and this is the way he did it, a stop, uh, you don't, you're not needed here, that's on Indian land. And he said the lagoon has been an issue over the years and we have not been able to do anything about it until it flows across Indian land, on the state land, and back on the Indian land. He said, when it crosses state land, I do get involved. But- uh, I never received a call. Uh, that, that's where that, that's on Indian land, you're, you're out of it. So, well, I've never done that to anyone. No, no, I know that. But uh, he gave me the name of the, the person that, that did. But that's when I, ask you uh, to give this discussion so that uh, it would bring it up and we could uh, act or react uh, accordingly. And it's always been said, especially by Mr. Fight, that uh, the Cherokee Nation would like to be at least 1% better than the state agencies in regard to environmental issues and I wholeheartedly agree with that. Uh, the lagoon issue was something a little bit new to me. I had seen them there, but I really did not know how they worked or, or what was involved until he started talking about them uh, leaking and or running over. And uh, just out of curiosity, the housing development that, that it serves do they have uh, individual septic tanks? No. So the the primary wastewater comes lagoon to no. the affluent that comes to the lagoons is raw sewage. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's a two-stage. It's a it's a two-stage primary wastewater lagoon, which is which was common in the '60s, uh, common way to to do collective waste treatment at you the time. Can still do them but the criteria for today are a little different. They are. And uh, a little more extreme. Uh, and they're predominantly evaporative. There's not just, there's zero discharge except for extreme right. events. Uh, and so here's, here's where we are. Uh, this is an issue that we have responsibility for. We have a fairly limited set of options in front of us. Uh, we need to know what they are. We need to know what the risk to the Cherokee Nation is from these uh, legacy lagoons. We need, that means we need, need to know the extent of them. We know, need to know the condition of them. And I assume that housing is the predominant uh, responsible agency for them. They will say no because it's on trust land. Who built them? Who built them? Indian Health Service. They built them for the Cherokee Nation and there was speculation. Nobody knows this. It's been a while back. I mean, even Pat doesn't know exactly. Even Pat. Uh, there has been a lot of sewer leakage from, there's two pump. Well, of course they leak. We stipulate they leak. Everything leaks. Well, yeah. Everything true. leaks. Eventually, so, everything leaks. Dr. Matlock, anytime Indian Health Service builds things like that, if there's, if the tribe is still under the Indian Health Service umbrella, at the end of the project, the tribe signs off on a contract or whatever, releasing the Indian Health Service, and they are so the, the tribe assumes all condition. full responsibility. So, and if again, that's a that's a question for that's a down the road question about liability and and, and authority. Uh, yeah. But here's here's what I see: we have legacy wastewater issues. We have responsibility to ensure that these are permitted under our under our compliance regulations. They have to be permitted. They have to be. We if we're not the permitting agency, EPA is. Um, if he, and if EPA won't, then the federal courts will have to be involved. That's our process path forward. That means who pays for that? This is Fan's point. EPA pays for this. It's pretty clear. Why? You're saying, eh, no, why? Who's responsible? We are not. We do not have a, an MPDS permit pro program. EPA does. Federal, either the federal agencies are responsible or they're not. And under current uh, well, programs, what say, and I understand this, 
they might per well permit it, it would be the Cherokee Nation's responsibility to develop the information for that permit. And they have to pay to have that done? Yes, sir. EPA has to pay to have that done? No, they won't. Well, then, again, this is, this is an area where we have been less than aggressive well, at enforcing our from rights. A, from an individual... Uh, Programmatically. That's the reason we need the inventory. They're not going to pay for an individual housing system. Right. Programmatically. I'm not advocating, I'm suggesting that, that our responsibility is to ensure compliance, and we, we do have a certain leeway on recommending process to ensure compliance when it comes to this sort of program area where there's not a, a discrete enterprise that's doing the bad thing. Uh, and that process, I would suggest to you that uh, EPA has jurisdiction over our wastewater. We do not. EPA has, therefore, authority and responsibility, two sides of the same coin. They're responsible for cleaning it up. What we have to do is find impact. Is there an impact from that wastewater to us? Yes, we can demonstrate that impact. Then Department of Interior, the trustee of our natural resources, has to provide, uh, has to clean up, has to remove that impact. They have to. Federal, the, the courts are very unambiguous and have been even through administrations about who's responsible for trust rights or for trust responsibilities. Department of Interior will do it under federal order if they won't do it otherwise, and they know that. The process is very clear. We, have, we submit a notice of finding of impact. And then after, after 24 months, if they have, under numerous federal rulings, if they have not taken action, then it, it, it is actionable at a higher court level, at the federal court level, if they have not, not acted in 24 months, if we find a, a finding of impact. Now, their actions can be minimal, and they certainly do these minimal things. They drip out resources to kind of tag it along. At least that's something. So what I'm suggesting is we need to get this ball rolling because the, the, probably the soonest we'll see resources is 24 months after that finding of impact. Let's get about those finding impact, demonstrating impact. It doesn't sound to me like it's going to be hard to do. Right. I am an advocate of getting every dime from the federal government our, our citizens deserve. Sure. Every dime. Uh, all, all that gaming money that we're, that we're bringing in, it is precious to us for other things, economic development in particular. We should not be doing the federal government's job just because we have access to other resources. We should be using what limited resources we have to make sure the federal government gives us every dime we deserve, and they have been short shrifting us for about 190 years, as best I can determine. So let's keep it moving. That's to add to my soapbox. They will never pay. Yeah, move over. The soapbox is getting crowded up here. Loss yes. that the Cherokee Nation went through. Never will they pay for that. Nope, nope. Hold them to task. We could go to a repatriation. Let's move back to Georgia. Northern Georgia is going to be. I love that. It's dry. This. Uh, my my clan, the Palmers, came from northern Georgia, but they were late comers. They didn't come here in 1890. So. Mine were early settlers, and we came from the Georgia area. Well, the Matlocks were early settlers from North Carolina, and they got to. They were in Cherokee Nation in Arkansas, early settlers, but they were unrecognized because they were early settlers. But the the tribal, my tribal role member folks came from the Palmers in northern Georgia, 1890s. They ran a mill over at Salem Springs. Okay, any other questions? So that'll be on the agenda for next. Discussion. We, yes, Laura, I'd like it to be on the agenda. Let's, if, I'd, I'd like the agenda item to be more than, well, we don't know. Uh, see what you can shake, shake the tree, see what falls out. Uh, I know this is gonna take us a while, and I know this is gonna be a persistent issue we're just digging into it a little, uh, and it's... But right now, we don't see a compliance issue. Oh, there's a compliance issue. I mean, you know what I'm saying. Oh, with oh. that look, there is a, there is a, since a systematic compliance failure. Certainly. It's a legacy compliance failure issue that needs to be addressed. Are you asking, does, does there need to be compliance action on the lagoon? I'm asking, right. I'd ask you that. You're the guy who makes that call. Um, there is no Pacific new issue to be addressed at this time. Yes, sir. But you know our regulations better than we do. And if Lisa and her group inspects them, she'll have her inspections in writing. Sure. Whether whether they are acted upon or not, uh, but she will have all that in writing. But where this is going for us is ultimately we're going to have to have our own wastewater compliance program. We know that. 
We're going to have to have water quality standards. We're going to have to have NPDES permits, stormwater permits. We're going to have to implement the whole thing. And those are not cheap programs. I'm saying that, Sean, because I know Lisa knows what she's doing. Good. She's not as smart as I am. All right. Any other discussion on this issue? Thank you, Blake, for bringing that to our attention. That was on the record. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it moves us to item 10. We've, we've, we've been at this uh, an inordinately long time today. It's been fascinating. Item 10, new business. Matters not known or reasonably foreseen prior to posting the agenda. Do we have any of those? Once, twice, and thrice. Seeing none, then the question is, when do we meet again? Um, Upcoming meetings, item yes. 11. We have our board meeting next week, Wednesday, the 18th of November at 11 a.m. 11 a.m., okay. 11. 11. No, that won't, tomorrow's the 11th. That would be seven. Seven. 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock at 11 o'clock, okay. So All right, so we have. 17th or the 18th? 18th. So we have the, the 8th is a month from now. The 1st is the first Tuesday of December. Uh, or the eighth. I'll probably be in Dallas that week of the first. So would the eighth be okay with folks? That's a month from now. This is the second we Tuesday. Probably have it then. We don't want to miss you. Uh, Bad word. How do you folks feel about the eighth? It's fine with me. Ed, is that okay with you? Hearing no objections, EPC December meeting will be on the eighth, and let's make. A, uh, let's carve out a, a significant amount of time to talk about this lagoon issue. Mm -hmm. Background information. We're not going to make any decisions. We're not going to. I will make that up front. I'll make that. The, the, yeah, the discussion. no. The, it's just discussion where there's no actionable item here. We're not looking at a compliance violation issue. This is an informative meeting, the predominant topic of the meeting. So I'm suggesting that we could even give some of our uh, reporting agencies an out that day. It's a busy time of year. Uh, to give us more time to talk about this. Written reports only? Yeah. I'm okay with that. Are you guys okay with that? Unless there's a compliance issue. If there's a compliance okay. issue, we need to talk. But if it's just a standard report? Uh, I know we're going to focus on this one lagoon, but I'd be really interested in seeing the uh, survey or the uh, inventory. The inventory of the lagoons? Just kind of like to know. No, that's, that's what I'm kind of yeah. like to know where we are on that. I would bet no one person knows where those are at. Pull together or have send, send out the word, <laughs> let folks know, uh, and put these things in a PowerPoint and let's throw them on the wall and let's see what we know. Let's yeah, see what sticks. Let's see what we know, and this gives us a sense of the of the size of the problem. Um, I would I would ask that you would reach out to Chad with the uh, with Attorney General's office and ask them what uh, and what a finding of, of non -com a finding of impact looks like to the Department of Interior, what constitutes a finding of impact, and how we go about creating said finding, what is the weight of evidence necessary. And so he could brief us on that, and then we could evaluate what our strategy is going forward. Is that meeting at 9 again? I think that's fine with me. It's okay with you guys? Fine. Yeah, it so looks nine o'clock. Good. Sir. Thank you for that. Any other um, upcoming meetings? Um, I, I mentioned earlier it's it's just a, a first get together meeting of uh, trying to uh, solve some problems on uh, litter in uh, wildcat dumping and the whole ball of wax through the. Uh, County Commissioners and the Sheriff's Department, the DEQ. It will be uh, Friday the 13th at 10:30. Okay. Uh, Adair County Courthouse. Friday the 13th. Uh, there's only one room being utilized right now for the commissioners. Okay. Uh, in the, the county north commissioners. north entrance. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to have either Jamie or David come to that meeting. I think that's I'll great. Be able to make it. But I think that's okay. great. Thank you for that. Okay. <laughs> I will entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Motion's made. Second. Seconded. All in favor, please turn out the lights. Thank you, folks, for your attention.